This just in, physically weak men more likely to be socialist. New study finds conservatives stronger than liberals. Back in 2017, outlets ran wild with a study from Brunels University where researchers gathered 171 men aged 18 to 40 and measured their strength against their political views. Surprisingly, the headlines weren't too far off from what they found. The men were tested across two political spectrums, their egalitarianism and their social dominance orientation. Their egalitarianism, or belief in equality, was tested with their position on statements like high incomes should be taxed more than is currently the case. Their social dominance orientation, or SDO, meaning their preference for hierarchies in society, was tested with statements like inferior groups should stay in their place. Which, if you agree with that, that I think you have a problem. <laughs> And surprise, surprise, the less egalitarian and more hierarchical you were, the more muscle you were packing. And the results were consistent, regardless of the wealth of the men being tested. Rich muscular men were the worst, but broke muscular men weren't too far off. And yes, the more egalitarian and the less socially dominant tended to be weaker. So capitalists are gigachads and people who believe in equality are wimps. Case closed, right? Well, not to sound like I'm coping here, but there is a few issues with the study. The men were aged 18 to 40, but that's because there was one 40-year-old in the batch of mostly 21-year-old kids. Not exactly a representative sample here. This link in the description goes into some further issues that, frankly, I'm not educated enough to parse through. Regardless, I'm not here to pick apart the nuances of this individual study. This is only one study out of a handful that have tried to find out how our physical appearance influences our beliefs, and muscularity seems to only be one such factor. Other studies have found that attractiveness is associated with similar conservative attitudes, with right-wing news trotting out headlines about ugly liberals as expected. Taken in their totality, the research seems to find that hotter and stronger people are less likely to be egalitarian and have a higher SDO. They're likely to be conservative. Now, when you think of a conservative, you probably think of some schmuck turning red in a school board meeting because they acknowledge trans people exist in class. But I'm not referring to right-wing culture war nonsense. No, I'm referring to the basic logic that undergirds conservatism. It's a belief in a ruthless competitive environment where it's every person for themselves. It's essentially a faith in free market capitalism. And for some reason, hot muscle heads are trending towards conservatism. It's the himbo to alt-right pipeline. What's going on here? Can we save the himbos? Thankfully, our good friend evolutionary psychology can help us make sense of this. In the words of Dr. Price, lead researcher of the main study, he says, In our ancestral past, men's physical size determined their status and resources. So, bigger men would have been fine with a survival of the fittest type of system. Back in the day, we didn't have guns or weapons. Our power came from our muscles. It makes sense, then, that those of us who are genetically gifted with strength are more likely to support inequality, whether it's unequal access to resources or mates, because we'd be the ones most likely to benefit. The same goes for attractiveness. People that are more attractive benefit from the halo effect, a bias where people are more likely to project positive, socially desirable traits to people they think are hot. Attractive people enjoy the perk of having an invisible social lubricant easing their ability to connect with others. Whereas muscularity could be considered a hard power, attractiveness is a soft power that grants the pretty individual more social status. And whether it's the hard power of might or the soft power of charm, those that tend to benefit from power, as evidenced by the research, are more likely to support a dog-eat-dog -dog politic. Some conservative figures have taken the science to its logical conclusion, to argue that conservatism is the ideology of the strong. Meanwhile, egalitarianism, socialism, equality, these are ideologies of the weak. Society isn't determined by a struggle between workers and the rich. 
but by the powerful and the meek, those who create and innovate and those who take. The argument goes that socialist ideas are just an effort by the feeble to take from the strong. It's a sentiment that echoes German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche's dichotomy of the master's morality and the slave's morality. Masters value strength, power, and self-assertion. They create their own values and they don't feel the need to justify it to society. They're free to live their lives as they see fit. Slave morality, on the other hand, grew out of the resentment of ancient slaves towards their masters. It's the morality of the oppressed, and it values weakness, humility, and self-sacrifice. Master morality was the original morality, but its values have long since been repressed by the sheepish masses. Nietzsche believed religions like Christianity were a big part in this repression. Christian values like the act of turning the other cheek when wronged, or the idea that it's better to give than to receive, are just two examples of slave indoctrination. Equality, then, is not a virtue we should all believe in, it's a tool of the herd to keep great individuals from achieving their potential. Wow, what is this, the script to The Incredibles? If you're not familiar with the politics of that movie, yeah, you should look it up. Anyway, you can see how this story is appealing to certain groups of people, right? I can already see a TikTok with the Sigma grindset music telling young men to abandon the sheep mentality and become an ubermensch, if that's how you say it, carving their own place in the world. Ubermensch being Nietzsche's ideal man who had abandoned slave morality. Strength training and bodybuilding seem to go hand in hand with this master philosophy. One post on the forum, bodybuilding.com, elaborates on this mentality. Bodybuilders are more self-reliant than the general population. We push hard to better ourselves to get stronger and bigger than the average person. Those who are less successful are a bunch of whining, lazy shits at worst. I built myself up. It's all your fault if you can't do what I did. The bodybuilding forums are notorious for leaning conservative, and you can't help but notice these conservative tendencies bubbling up throughout the fitness community at large. Take for example CrossFit, the fitness firebrand that took over America in the mid-aughts. I thought it was just the place where people do the weird pull-ups, but apparently CrossFit has been a conservative nesting bed since the very beginning. Its popularity among military and law enforcement is what got the ball rolling for the company, helping it build a macho, no pain, no gain branding that's gotten the company in a lot of controversy. During the 2020 summer uprisings, the CEO had to step down after a series of insensitive tweets and leaked audio of him saying, We're not mourning George Floyd. I don't think me or any of my staff are. More recently, far-right congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene has used CrossFit as part of her political origin story, posting videos of herself at the gym to symbolize her strength and power. This has led to a sort of CrossFit exodus, as more and more independently owned CrossFit gyms have begun to disassociate from the brand as it inches further right. The association with the far right is no coincidence either. Fascist fitness is the latest recruitment tool used by extremist groups to recruit young men. Back in World War II, Germany used propaganda centering the male body, as well as fitness and combat sports, to build fanaticism within the party. Today's ultra-right groups are doing the same, using the same Nietzschean arguments we outlined earlier in the video. And it's easy to not want to associate yourself with these people. We can look at the Nazis who use strength as a tool for cruelty and say, yeah, we don't want to be like that. But there's a question that's still gone unanswered throughout all of this. Why do we believe in equality? Were our values shaped by our physical weakness? Our slave morality that's a consequence of generations of evolution? And as the ideology of the weak. Is it even something worth fighting for in the first place? It's a thought that's crossed my mind after losing a bunch of weight and spending more time in the gym. Not that I have an exceptional amount of muscle or anything, but when I have a big hoodie on, you know, I, I look big-ish. And I notice the way that power seems to warp the way strangers act around me. Avoiding me, walking around me, it feels good to feel powerful. Power feels good. So wouldn't it follow that the ideology of the powerful would also feel good? 
It's the kind of mentality you can easily find yourself getting sucked into if you find yourself on the right algorithmic rabbit hole, especially in our culture that valorizes strength and power. No one wants to be on the side of the weak or be a weak person. Lucky for us, we don't have to turn to the dark side for answers, because the entire fascist argument about masters versus slaves, the strong versus the weak, is built on the creaky foundation of evolutionary psychology. And if you've watched my last few videos, explanations about anything that rely on evil psychology are almost always wrong. As one sociologist put it, I don't see much specific value in trying to project our intuitions about muscle-bound bullies versus weaklings back onto the savanna. There are much simpler explanations for these findings that don't involve tying things back to genetics. The solution could be as simple as people are more likely to form beliefs that coincide with their self-interest. In less words, privileged people like inequality. What comes first is that you're big and strong. You find yourself in this big muscular body and other people are intimidated by you and you have status and tend to win. So I like inequality because inequality suits me. The same goes for attractiveness. People that receive more social support and attention are likely to have blind spots that make them less likely to believe in egalitarianism. Their world is greased up by the benefits of their attractiveness. It's harder for them to see the reality for their less handsome peers. Another explanation pins this on a self-fulfilling cycle. An older study by Dr. Price found that men's drive towards muscularity was a strong predictor for their conservative attitudes, not just their muscularity itself. So if you believe in hierarchy and inequality, you're more driven to pursue strength, to put yourself in a better spot in that hierarchy. And of course, there's a number of cultural factors that play into this. Perhaps kids from left-leaning families just don't put as much effort into sports and working out. If so, the general question then becomes, why would left-leaning guys not value working out as much? Perhaps they subscribe to a value system that emphasizes collectivism and mutual support over individualism and competitiveness. But that's just speculation. I think Dr. Price is onto something on his last point here. While trends like the Solitariat movement that promote fitness and bodybuilding for socialists have bucked the overall trend, strength and power don't seem to be as common of a pursuit for the left as opposed to the right. And I think this comes down to the fundamental difference in how the two view power. Take the Nazis' hyperfixation on the masculine physique. They valorized strength as a tool for cruelty a means to commit unimaginable harm on others. The masters and the slaves of Nietzsche's writings are different because the master can unilaterally decide to ignore society and be oppressive and despotic on a whim. For the far right, power is nothing more than the power to be cruel. But for the rest of us, Power and strength are a lot more than that. Individual strength is just one form strength can take. And there's another, much more powerful form. Collective strength. Power that comes not from one man's bicep, but from the abilities of the collective community. Since evolutionary psychologists love talking about our ancient past, let's turn the dial back once more to the savanna. Moral Origins by anthropologist Christopher Bohm explores how our morality evolved in tandem with early human societies. These hunter-gatherer societies were largely egalitarian, but this egalitarianism wasn't simple to maintain. Like in our society, some people were naturally stronger, more charismatic, were better hunters. I'm better! I am better! These potential upstarts, as Bohm calls them, would be natural-born leaders in today's world. And natural-born leaders pose a threat to an egalitarian society, especially if people who are better start thinking they can order people around. Our ancient ancestors likely didn't take kindly to taking orders, and they had strict rituals in place to keep any one individual from flying too high. Egalitarian societies were very creative in finding ways to preserve their societies of equals. Whether they ritually criticized game hunted by talented hunters to keep their ego in check, or shunned members who were prone to fits of rage and jealousy, or outright murdered those who made overt attempts to dominate others. 
Bohm refers to these as reverse dominance hierarchies. They were methods by the collective to keep the strong in line and to preserve their egalitarian ways of life. Contrary to Nietzsche's writings, it was this slave morality that came before any other form of morality. This system of reverse dominance helped in preventing violence and it promoted cooperation. It's the foundation of our modern moral code and it's what made humanity what it is today. While a conservative might see a reverse dominance hierarchy as a method for the masses to control the strong, it was a way of keeping the strong and potentially powerful from monopolizing freedom and attempting to control everybody else. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below.